Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're checking out a new Chromebook from Acer today. This is their new Chromebook 11. I'll put links to this in the video description so you can find the exact one we're talking about today. And I want to thank a viewer, Stefan, who told me about it. I found it on Amazon uh, for 180 bucks and he also uh, tipped me off to another thing that I bought too, which we'll be looking at in a few weeks. So uh, he's really spending my money quite nicely, but I think you'll like what he found for us to look at. Now this is, in many ways, your standard $180 Chromebook. It's got a Celeron N2840 processor, so it is kind of like last year's processor, but on these things it really doesn't make much of a difference. Two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage, but what it's really got on here that I am quite fond of is the display, an 11.6 inch IPS display, and that's something I haven't seen on a sub $200 Chromebook before. IPS displays look better than uh, the cheaper displays that we often see at this price point. Uh, so better color, better brightness, things really pop and are very sharp on the display. Even though it's only a 1366 by 768 display, it looks nicer and almost looks higher resolution than a comparable Chromebook with the same screen size and resolution, but running with a cheaper display. So they've uh, put a really, just a really nice display on here. It's quite surprising actually. The viewing angles aren't the best on it, um, but they are better than cheap displays, just not as good as I've seen on other IPS displays. But uh, it's also a matte finish and not reflective, which might be why uh, the viewing angle isn't as good. Very lightweight, it's about 2.4 pounds. Uh, pretty thin too, it's really got a nice feel to it. Uh, they put an aluminum plate here on the front to uh, protect it a little bit. The rest of it is plastic, but they textured the bottom of the plastic here to give you a better grip. Uh, as you're walking around with it. Uh, the hinge here is deceiving. It looks like it could go all the way around like some of those 360 Chromebooks do. And in fact, Acer does have a Chromebook that does that, which costs more, of course. Uh, this one doesn't, so it'll stop right here. It doesn't go any further than that. Uh, so just be careful you don't push it back too far because that hinge does go the whole uh, length of the back here, but it only goes out to here, which actually is further than uh, some notebooks go, but not any further than that. So I wouldn't push it <laughs> too far down to the uh, surface of your desk or table. Table. On the left hand side here, we've got some ports to look at. We've got the power port here, of course, uh, HDMI port, USB 3.0, and there's also an SD card slot, a full size SD card slot. And what's nice about this is that your card goes all the way in here, and uh, that's good if you want to add additional onboard storage because it only has 16 gigabytes of storage. You could pop a card in here and get more, and it fits uh, flush to the side of the, of the device here. Uh, it's actually kind of hard to get it to pop out sometimes, so uh, nice to have one that goes in all the way so you can augment some storage if you wish. On the other side, we have a USB 2.0 port, a headset microphone adapter here, and a Kensington lock to lock it down on a table. And they must be using this plastic molding on another model because there is a little spacer on here that doesn't actually do anything. So if you see that, it won't do anything for you. Uh, the speakers are weird. They're kind of situated on the bottom here, so you do have stereo separation, uh, and they kind of vent out of the left and right hand side of the unit here. Doesn't sound all that great, and it does vary based on what surface your uh, Chromebook is placed on. So initially when it was on my desk at work, it actually sounded okay, uh, but on my tile countertop earlier, it didn't sound so great. So it really ch changes the sound quality depending on uh, what you put it down on. So it, I wouldn't buy this for uh, good sound, but you can of course plug in some headphones and get a little bit better audio out of those. Uh, the keyboard is your standard Chromebook keyboard because they all have to look like this. Google actually sanctions what these keys look like. Uh, they're well spaced. It does feel nice. It actually has a nice uh, you know, high quality feel to it. I've seen some Chromebook keyboards that are the same size as these keys, but don't feel as good. Uh, this one feels nice. The trackpad, I'm not all that crazy about. It is responsive, but it's one of those trackpads where you really have to push it down to get the click. Um, so I, I would prefer a little bit less of a travel time on the trackpad here, but it is functional uh, and on par with what I have seen on other Chromebooks. So pretty nice design overall. And again, that display uh, is really nice on it. The battery life, uh, they rate for about nine hours or so. I would agree with that. Uh, give or take a half hour or so with standard web browsing and email and word processing and whatnot. Uh, you'll see a little bit less if you're you know, doing movies or uh, other kind of high-end taxing kinds of stuff. Uh, but general usage will be uh, what they advertise, at least from what I've seen so far in my testing. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, so this is a Chromebook, so you will likely spend a lot of time in your Chrome browser using it. By the way, I've got a whole video series on uh, what Chrome OS is all about, so you should watch that if you are thinking about a Chromebook and haven't used one before. It's linked above. Uh, so you can see how fast web pages come up on here, ads and all. Uh, the ads really do slow these little machines down, but once everything is loaded up, it will uh, respond a little bit faster once uh, you get these ads with all these videos playing in here and everything else. This does have wireless AC on board, the latest and greatest, uh, two by two wireless radio, and it supports both the five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz bands. 
Uh, so it does, uh, once all the stuff loads up, uh, actually does a pretty nice job web browsing. And I think uh, for a $180 Chromebook, it is really quite capable. I am going to show you, though, some uh, 1080p 60 video here from YouTube. And this is an issue that uh, we have seen on a lot of other Intel-based Chrome devices as well as Windows machines. Now, you see here we've got this 1080p video loaded up here. Uh, it's kind of lagging a little bit. I'm going to pull up the stats for nerds here so you can get an idea as to what we're seeing for frame drops. But uh, it is dropping a lot of frames as this video is playing back. And I found this to be an issue with Chrome not really optimizing itself for these Intel processors. The computer's chip in here can play these videos back at the right speed, except the fact that uh, for whatever reason, these optimizations for these Intel chips haven't made their way to the Chrome browser on any platform. Uh, so that's what we're seeing here. Now, again, this is only a 720p display. So if you go down to uh, the 720p 60 frames per second video, uh, you'll be fine. And in most cases, YouTube will pick the resolution that fits best for your particular display. So you can see it is running uh, much smoother now uh, with that 720p video uh, now that we switched it over to that. So uh, I did drop a few frames when it first got started here, but it looks like it's going at a good clip now. So you probably want to stay at 720p for everything. It does play back 1080p 30 frames per second video okay. Get a little bit of stuttering when it starts up, but after that it kind of smooths out. And again, I think that's due uh, to some of the issues they're having with uh, these Intel chips and not optimizing for them. So I think that's a software thing that will eventually get fixed. But you'll see, you know, just going to YouTube and playing back a video without uh, getting into all the modes and everything. I'll just, you know, maybe pick this video here from my channel. Uh, you'll see that one just comes right up and starts playing without any real issue here. So don't expect the 1080p version to work at 60 frames per second, but 720p should, and you have a 720p display conveniently to play it back. So uh, if you keep it within its native display resolution, uh, you should be fine there. So really decent performance, again, on par with what we've seen on other Chromebooks. On the Octane Benchmark Test, which measures how well it does browse the web, uh, we get a score of 8,765, which puts it in line uh, with some of the other computers running with this exact same processor. In fact, it does a little bit better, and I might attribute that to the fact that they're probably optimizing Chrome uh, over the period of time that we've been looking at these Chromebooks. So I would expect that some of the older ones with the same chip are probably going to be around that performance level now, but uh, it is performing quite well uh, for the kinds of tasks that you might do on a Chromebook. So that is the Acer Chromebook 11. And a lot of you have written in over the years asking if there was a Chromebook with a IPS display like this in this form factor, and maybe at this price too. Uh, there wasn't, but now there is. And I think that is uh, really the selling point here is the display. It performs about where other Chromebooks perform with this uh, price and chipset built in. So you're not going to get a huge performance boost here, but uh, you definitely will get a, a boost in the display. And I think for a lot of folks, that is something they wanted to see for a while. So they've managed to get it in here at the right price. I would love to see this display make its way over to uh, their higher performing Chromebooks. So my favorite Chromebook from Acer at the moment is their C740, which has a faster Intel processor, but not a nice display like this one has. So it'd be nice to see this one kind of make its way over uh, to other computers in their line. So we'll keep an eye on things and see what happens. But uh, I, I can definitely recommend this one for sure. If there are other Chromebooks that you're seeing making their way out into the marketplace that I should look at, uh, please do let me know in the comments below because I love looking at these things and uh, I love the price of them too. So we'll definitely take a look at a few more as they come out. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.